Welcome to the Less Doing Podcast, where you will learn how to start living more by doing less. Let me help you optimize, automate, and outsource your entire life so you can focus on doing the things you love. Now here's your host, Ari Mizell. Welcome back to the Less Doing Podcast. I'm your host, Ari Mizell, and my guest today is my friend, George Bryant of civilizedcaveman.com. So, George, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm super stoked. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, every time I talk to you, it's like I, I, I learn, I was going to say I learned something, but I learned like seven things, um, and then 16 <laughs> more to connect to that, and then I start digging deep, and you have, uh, you have a brain for marketing that uh, I feel like maps very well to my brain for sort of optimized process and stuff. And we just like dig in and then get excited about stuff. So it's, it's always fun to share that with you. And um, I really, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you on here. So yeah, I, lo- I love it. I, it's just dangerous though. I, I think self-awareness is key because <laughs> I could spend like 26 hours straight in the clouds with you about all the like strategy and tactics and everything. And then it's, it's putting the rubber to the road. Yes, that is true. That's true. Uh, well, so let, let's give people a little bit of background. We don't have to give them the whole story because you've lived about seventeen different lives. But uh, <laughs> you, you know, you you've been you're a, a a marine, a food blogger, a marketing consultant, entrepreneur many times over, a father. You know, you you've um, well, I just listed about a bunch of them. But how would you describe yourself? Yeah, I <laughs> you know. I, I do see my life in like chapters, but it's more like uh, encyclopedias, like volume one, volume two. And so, um, yeah, I, I think at the heart, I would describe myself as uh, a little kid that's out to prove that you can do anything you want, regardless of the circumstances you're faced with. And so to give the shortest elevator pitch ever uh, that I normally give is I grew up in a super abusive family, drugs, alcohol, um, physically abused. I was sexually abused. And then I decided to do the hardest thing I could. I wanted to run away. So I decided to join the Marine Corps because that's what logical people do. They do the hardest thing ever. And so uh, 2002, I left for boot camp after I forged my parents' signature to join the service. I don't think I can get in trouble for that. It's been quite a few years now. And, uh, I went to boot camp, ended up being honor graduate, number one out of a thousand people, went to Marine combat training, honor graduate, number one out of like 2,200 people, went to my job school, graduated first out of a couple hundred people. And all that meritorious promotion got me was deployed faster. So I ended up in Somalia in 2004, uh, almost lost my legs uh, on my 21st birthday, spent 12 months in a wheelchair, uh, 18 months of physical therapy, had six surgeries, uh, all while dealing with bulimia and addicted to prescription pain pills from the pain and uh, continued on that journey, um, made a full recovery, ran a half Ironman, tied the world record for a standing box jump in Afghanistan, ended up getting one too many concussions. I had seven concussions in three years. And so after 12 years of service, the military said, hey, listen, uh, you're not fit for duty anymore. We're going to kick you out. And I was medically separated. And in that time frame, I wanted to overcome my bulimia. So I found paleo through our buddy Tim's book and then Rob Wolf. And I taught myself how to cook. And all I did was document it online. I actually documented it on a Facebook page. Facebook turned into blogger, blogger turned into a website. And two years after I taught myself how to cook, I wrote a book. Uh, the book was called The Paleo Kitchen, did all the marketing myself. Um, 22 week New York Times bestseller hit number four. Then I was bored and I decided to make an app. Never done that before, taught myself on YouTube with a business partner, launched an app. We hit number four in the world, um, got featured by Apple as one of the top 10 health apps of 2015, and then continued on that journey and realized that how I do marketing really values people first. Um, you know, we can rip out Simon Sinek and it starts with why or people over pro- profit and all those people and things that you do and everyone else does. But um, everybody asks what the secret to my marketing is. And I said it was either getting blown up a couple times and knocking some neural pathways in place in my brain or uh, just really marketing to myself and focusing on what I want and respecting people's time and their actions and their energy on the internet. And so I started doing digital marketing consulting. And uh, since then, that has kind of skyrocketed to some massive, massive clients. My biggest clients have $7 billion a year, but everyone from men's health, women's health, on it, Vital Proteins, you, 
yeah. and, and a lot of people along those lines. And so that wraps up the entire journey. So I still run my food blog, civilizedcaveman.com, which we're getting to do a reboot. And then I do my consulting as primarily like my full-time job. Well, I support my family, my son who turns one in like seven days and my wife who has amazing horses, which keep me busy. <laughs> that was literally two minutes by the way that was that was awesome no that's that's really impressive because uh we spent three hours together going through this stuff but you know you didn't share with me the concussions or the horses yeah <laughs> uh, what, what were the majority of the concussions from um so um there were a couple so actually before we deployed we were in a field training op in the middle of like a massive storm and uh I had like a 30 foot tent pole blow over and fall on top of my head and knock me out cold and split my head open. And that's actually what started it. And then when I was in Afghanistan, like three months later, um, I got in a vehicle accident, um, smashed my head on a window. Um, and then like a month after that, there was a mortar that came in blast and then got concussed from that one. And then, um, there was a second uh, vehicle accident. Isn't like we wrecked the truck, but like things aren't always nice and calm in the middle of Afghanistan. And so, you know, it's almost like being in a demolition derby sometimes, even when you're just driving down the street. And so a lot of mine came from like indirect, um, indirect trauma from the, the circumstances around me, accidents, blasts, mortars, gunfire, all that stuff. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, uh, the horses. How do the horses play into the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, I just my wife. My wife is like uh, when she was a teenager, she was like a world champion horse trainer and shower. And so she has uh, she loves horses. She has like an affinity for horses, and it's her favorite thing. It's like her happy place. And I don't get horses. Like I don't like riding them. They make me very uncomfortable. I see them as giant, really expensive dogs that cost a lot more money. Um, but they do make her happy, and, and I, I secretly like secretly love them. Like I miss them but um we have we have two horses and they are the biggest problem children ever um they love getting hurt uh like just for example last week one of our our arabian horse got permanently medically retired for the rest of his life because he likes beating himself up and then our other horse uh my wife was riding got naughty she jumped off and then he got away ran through like seven fences caused a couple thousand dollars of damage, but in the process through the wire fencing, almost literally amputated his own front right leg, ended up getting like 250 stitches. And now he's on stall rest for the next four months. So all we have to do is go out there and clean his wound twice a day. And he gets to stand there and eat food and do nothing. So they're literally like problem children. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Um, so not many horses in New York city, right? So like outside the hor the, the cop ones. Yeah, of course. Um, that's that's so funny. It's just like an interesting dynamic to add into your life. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Like, the, if you really like look at it, like I laugh about this, but I went from bullets to brownies. Like, I was this tattooed, bald marine with a six pack that was also bulimic at the same time, but people would be like terrified of me. And then I leave the Marine Corps, and the first thing I do is I become a food blogger. Like, there is no transition for that whatsoever like there's not one roadmap that you could lay out that you could be like yeah you're gonna go from being a marine deployed a couple times combat tours getting hurt to you're gonna cook paleo food and be a food blogger and write a cookbook and yeah, it just it doesn't even make completely sense hypocritical man that's i mean that's all i can say <laughs> <laughs> um i mean no it's it's I, it, Again, it's like th this is what i was saying before is well i'm sorry actually i said this before we started recording what what i what I just kept hearing from your story that you've shared with me and that we that I know about you now is that you just keep teaching yourself stuff like yeah. that's what you're doing. So do you feel like there is some sort of unique ability you have that like a different way of looking at things or like uh, I mean, that's not an obvious thing for some people. Yeah, no, that's an amazing question. And, and trust me, I've done a lot of work around this. And so what it really is, is that like. Uh, from the earliest time of my childhood is that I wasn't really given anything, right? Like it was survival mode and my paradigm developed in the world is that I'm not good enough. Well, I spent a lot of my life going through life, not realizing that I was run from insecurity, like that I was driven by like Napoleon complex, right? I have to prove this, right? And so that created results, but it created results that left me feeling empty and like the ultimate chase of something. But once I became aware that those are my patterns, 
I was able to look at it and be like, yeah, like I have this drive to learn everything and do everything myself out of like scrappiness and necessity. And so as long as I'm aware of that pattern, I can still do it and learn it. So I I really shifted um, what was coming out of insecurity and used it to my benefit to allow me to learn these things and to master these things and process these things and then kind of outsource them, pass them off or had them to my tool chest. And um, I don't have any special abilities like like really at the end of the day, like I am no different, no better no worse than anybody. And we all have our paradigms, but I, I focus really heavily like, and, and I want to dispel this too, because I think, I think it's something that's not talked about in entrepreneurship a lot is that, uh, it's really easy to follow like entrepreneurs on the internet and see like the projected perfect life, like the private jets and the cars and like this business is great. And I'm like, for every successful launch, there were a hundred that didn't work. Right. And like nobody posts about those. And I love posting about those because for what you see, I learn all of this stuff, but most of the process is me crying, me struggling with PTSD, me handling my depression, but still choosing to show up. And so it's either that I'm really, really like rabidly stubborn or I'm just committed to something bigger. And I realize that like feelings are temporary and they're fleeting. And and in one moment I might feel really, really motivated. And the next moment I might feel really, really down. So I always focus on just taking like one consistent step or action towards my goal, even if the best thing I can do that day is take a shower or if I can watch 10 hours of video footage and teach myself a new skill. I just try to continue to move forward and I never let myself sit stagnant, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. But, you know, even so, I I, so and that that that's a part of the answer. But the the thing that I really found so impressive is that, you know, uh, some people might say like, oh, I'm going to I decided I want to learn how to cook. So I went and I sous chef for this famous chef for a year or, you know, I wanted to do this. So I went and worked with this person. I followed this person. All the stories you told me, you basically just started (laughs) fucking around, basically. I did. I did. You know, like the paleo thing. I mean, you didn't you, you, you just were doing recipes over and over and over until they made sense. Yeah. So. I can actually break it down with paleo because this is what this is what my thing was. And I think this is where you and I get along so well. Like you're totally about like the processes and and I love that about you. But what I did is that because I didn't know how to cook, I don't like following recipes and I also don't like not doing something well. So I was like, I'm going to cook. But if I'm going to do this right, I need to learn this. So what I did is I picked one recipe and I made a rule that I would cook that recipe every day until I had it memorized and mastered. So like the first couple recipes I made were like crock pot recipes. And so like after like five days, I could recite that recipe off the top of my head and I could do it. And once I mastered like that recipe, then I would add another one. And so then I got to a point where I had like these five recipes that I had mastered and it took about a month and a half. And I literally would just cook on repeat. I would eat the same thing. Uh, But once I had it mastered those five, then it was like, great. Now I'm going to get daring. I'm going to swap an ingredient. Like I'm going to swap like a pepper. I'm going to swap a spice. I'm going to add a vegetable. I'm going to change the meat. And really what five recipes gave me was like an arsenal of 20 different things that I could cook. And then I got to explore all the pieces of those. So like photography, for example, I had never taken a photograph in my life outside of, you know, those disposable cameras that everybody had. And then I realized that if you want to be a food blogger, you you have to take pictures that people actually want to look at. And the dog, the dog puke on a plate doesn't work, like just doesn't work on the Internet. And so I was like, okay. What am I going to do? So I literally didn't waste any time. I went and bought a camera, a digital SLR, and I bought a lens. And I'm like, well, I'm going to figure this out. And I was like, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to watch some YouTube videos, spend a couple hours. I learned the difference between ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. And then I just started taking pictures. And I got obsessive. And I took so many pictures. And then I started learning. And it would take one recipe. I would take 100 to get like one shot to use. But then a year later... I could literally take out my camera, take three pictures and have two that I use just because I continually practice. So I think really it comes down from like the full immersion because I still get frustrated. I still get like fubbled. Like I I get upset that I don't get it. And I think I'm just so stubborn. I dive right back in. I'm like, the only option is that I get this. And then the reason I see it that way is because what I feel like has happened is that I have this toolbox in myself now that like, it doesn't matter the situation, whether it's survival or marketing or blogging or photography or, or even some other stuff, I have the tools to be able to 
speak about it, understand it, teach it, use it, and implement it in any manner possible. So it's worth the effort that I put in. Well, and so that, and right, there you go. And that, that's that's the part I was going to say to sort of round this out is that, A, the theme that you get from what you're saying is that deliberate practice is a really huge part of this, clearly, and yep. I guess some unbelievable patience. But then, you know, mastery, they say that mastery comes through teaching. Right. So for sure. At this point, except that in this case, I feel like the mastery came through teaching yourself and just be well, for sure. And, and that's definitely a part of it. Ari, like, I feel like that's where it was. Like I would teach myself to the point where I was confident, but like when you look at it, I had no right to teach people how to cook is what I thought. But then it was one of my mentors a long time ago. They're like, if you know one thing more than somebody else, you can teach. And I have found that the quickest way for me to master anything is to teach it. So um, marketing, things like that. Like I'm not like this school trained MBA PhD in marketing. I'm just this guy that's in the weeds on the internet with everybody. And I pay attention to people. I pay attention to their behaviors and what they do. But like something new comes on the scene, like bots, for example. And everyone's like, okay, who's going to teach bots? And I'm like, I am. They're like, have you ever used them before? I'm like, no. I'm like, give me like an hour. And like, I go like immerse myself, but I don't watch videos. I like download it. I click around. I'm like, okay, I got this. We can do this and we do it together. And I feel like part of it is like in the beginning, I'm like literally pontificating until I've experienced it. And then it becomes my own teaching. Yeah. That, I mean, and you can see that. Um, so I just want to take a second here to let everybody know that if you are enjoying this uh, conversation as much as I am, make sure that you go to lessdoing.com slash 301, this is episode 301, uh, where you'll get to see George's three top tips for being more effective, which I'll be able to ask him at the end. And that's something that is available to our members in our Less Doing Labs premium channel. So what do you think, I mean, now obviously you're doing a lot of stuff with marketing and everything, but what are some of the things that you're most excited about in, in, in marketing? You know, I know many chat is one of them, for example, but like what, yeah, what yeah, for sure. you're, you're teaching yourself now. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, yeah, one of my, to answer that, I'm going to, I'm going to preface it a little bit. I, as an entrepreneur, like, and I, I didn't even start calling myself an entrepreneur until a couple months ago, but like I had this mission when I started cooking the, the, the urge to cook came from the ability to heal myself. And like, I didn't want someone else to be bulimic or to have all the stuff that I went through. So on to teach, and I was like, oh, I want to help a million people. And I reached a million people with my blog. Like there were, there were some months I got 1.2 million unique people on my website. So I accomplished that goal. And then I was like, I want to help a billion people. And then I realized that helping a billion people on my own was all about ego. So the reason I get so excited about marketing is because now I get to work with people like you and all these companies and I get to help them help millions of people. And it just exponentially increases the mission and the ability to serve people. And I only work with companies that are aligned to that, like people first, you know, like adding value. And so I love the tools that allow me to do that. Now, for marketing and like the things that I'm doing that I'm most excited about, uh, I'm most excited about um, going to where people's attention is and adding value, like at the core of everything. And so like things like Facebook and Instagram and, and Snapchat and, and all those things, those are tools. But at the core of it, like I am excited about teaching people that it's okay to get emails and it's okay to get Facebook messages because they are actually valuable and you can use them or not use them but we're still going to be here to support you. So yeah, uh, for example, bots are one of them, like Facebook bots, like everybody lives on Facebook, right? There's like, I, I forgot the numbers, but there's so many active people every day on Facebook and there's over 2 billion people on the platform. And so in order to respect people's time, we can use bots now. And so I've seen both sides already. I've seen the people like just abusing people, like sending messages and messages and Facebook actually just cracked down and they instituted some rules with bots that, if you uh, message someone that has been inactive or unengaged with you outside of a 24-hour window of promotion, they'll ban your account, which makes me really happy, by the way. So many chat. I'm friends with the owners of the company and the head of BizDev there. And um, I love it because it allows me to do fun things with people. So like, for example, in the cooking world, um, we are getting ready to release like an Instapot course. And this thing, like everybody loves this tool. It's like a pressure cooker, crock pot, rice cooker, all in one. But the problem is, is there's like six models and nobody knows which ones they want. And back in the day, like we would have to send someone an ebook or do like a full video course. and like, let me help you figure this out. And so what I did is like a week ago, I created Dr. Instapot. 
And so now when you send me a Facebook message with the word Instapod, um, when I set it up, it actually takes you through messages that help you figure out exactly which one you need and then puts you into that space. So um, those tools are allowing me to use technology to create a better experience for consumers or our fans or our friends or people in our space, which is going to allow us to reach more people. So yeah, many chat is definitely one of them. Email is another one that I'm just beyond excited about. Uh, and the longer that this, the marketing myths go on and the more idiots that want to make millions of dollars and tell everybody emails dead, the longer that goes on, the more excited I get because email isn't dead. I'm in my inbox more than anything else in my day. And I think it's just about making email valuable again, which is one of the things that I teach and how to do that and how to respect people and give them value and, and do that first. And so that, and then, um, I, I love Facebook in general. Um, I just love like so many chats for the bot and then email is a way to do it. But, uh, my big thing, and I teach everybody this and focus on this is Facebook groups. Um, and for me, it allows me to use the technology uh, to capture people's attention where they are and build communities digitally that create possibilities for people that we didn't have 20 years ago. Like we couldn't have digital cook-offs across the country where we actually used to have to go to your neighbor, but we can use the technology to kind of bridge that. You can learn from people. You can teach from people like, like 38 people. I mean, 38 countries represented in one of my Facebook groups, which, you know, was impossible 20 years ago, but now we can connect. We can talk about dishes there, cooking techniques there, and like, you know, agriculture and farming and food and all that stuff. So I get really excited about that stuff because it's people at the core of all of it that make me happy about all of this. Yeah. And that's, and that's great. So, I mean, to, for the most part, then you're, you're, I mean, I, I would say you're, you're somewhat agnostic to what you're helping to market, but it does seem like a lot of it is around health and wellness and sort of, uh, I guess, well, wellness really. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, it, it's interesting because I have, if you look at like the demographic of my, um, of my marketing clients, it's, it's all health and wellness and or business. Like it's one or the other. <laughs> and so those are the two areas I think that, um, I focus the most on because health and wellness is to me is so much deeper than like just eating food or working out. It's like the holistic approach, like the full harmony of every aspect, like from your mindset to um, your mental fortitude to your eating, your um, working out, how you cook and everything. But then on business, it allows me to get to the the macro level and affect the people that are affecting those people to make sure that business is going correct and adding value and, you know, no more snake in the grass, no more Carl salesmen. Um, and so I think they kind of fit perfectly together, but yeah, that's, that's typically been what I've attracted. Yeah. And so, which, I mean, it just makes sense with your past and everything. So what is sort of next? I mean, that's, we talk about what you're excited about, but what are some of the the things that you think are like the next projects that you want to tackle personally? Like what are some of the skills that you might want to be learning next? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, uh, for me, I'm going to launch a podcast in the new year. So that's one area that I haven't gone yet. Um, and I did live video every day for nine months. Like I've kind of mastered it all the video editing, everything like that, but I'm actually excited about the podcast. Cause it's actually one of those mediums that, uh, in, intimidates me. Like I've been on over like 700 podcasts now and I'm, I have the best equipment, the best setup, but like the fact of like recording audio and editing it scares me for some reason. So I'm excited to like dive in and learn it. And then once I learn it, I can outsource it, but it just gives me another platform to connect with people and reach them. So podcasting is definitely, uh, one of the big ones. And then, um, in the new year, when we relaunch our, our new website, uh, we're adding, we're moving away from just recipes and we're adding, um, like a lifestyle and a fitness section. And, and I'm not a certified trainer. I'm not like a fitness not, I got plenty of weight to lose right now. And why that excites me is because it gets to be my accountability. So with the fitness thing, I'm doing that on purpose to hold myself accountable. So I'm going to launch a fitness section and I'm going to use myself as an example, whatever workouts I'm doing, whatever walks I'm going on, whatever amount of body weight I'm doing or, or, or lifting I'm doing. And regardless of how I feel, whether I have a six pack, an eight pack or a beer gut at the time, but I don't even drink beer. I'm going to do it anyways, because it's going to allow me to be authentic with people and be transparent. And, and I think that's my favorite thing about marketing and the internet in general is that when you use it correctly, it just allows us to create possibility for people. Yeah. Well, and I, I can't wait to see how you hack a, uh, a well, or how you 
do a podcast launch because there's so much stuff that can be done to that to just make it like number one forever. And I'm, I'm sure you will nail it. Um, so I've been thinking about it quite extensively. <laughs> so before I get to the last question of the interview, tell people where they can find out more about you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the easiest place to find me, um, if you're into websites is my website, uh, civilized caveman. Uh, but on social, if you love Instagram, I'm on Instagram as civilized caveman. If you love Facebook, I'm on um, Facebook as civilized caveman. And then if you love Twitter, I'm actually cooking caveman on Twitter because civilized is one character too long. Ha. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you, George. It's always fun to talk to you. And, uh, and thank you. Hopefully people will check out Civilized Cave and learn more. Yeah, I'm super stoked. So thank you so much for having me and everybody listening. Thank you for listening because I realized that 30 minutes of your day are valuable and you chose to spend it with us. Thank you for joining us today on the Less Doing Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share with your friends. For more information about Ari and his groundbreaking methods, please visit us online at lessdoing.com and on social media at Ari Mizell. We'll see you next week.